Hello and welcome to All Knit and Spin If I Want To. I'm Andrea Mowry of Drea Renee Knits and this is where I try my very best to answer some of your questions. Today I am wearing Metamorphic, my newest sweater pattern that I just released on Tuesday. This sweater uses Spin Cycle Yarns Metamorphic, hence the name of the sweater, and they're dyed in the wool. Metamorphic is a very special yarn. Um, Spin Cycle mills their own yarns and in that process there's naturally fiber waste that occurs and so they wanted to do find a way to use up that fiber instead of letting it go to waste. So they began blending it with fresh merino wool and spinning it into their metamorphic yarn base. So it's really small batch, it changes colors um, from batch to batch and it is a really, really lovely yarn to knit with, especially for sweaters. So I paired that with their classic dyed in the wool, which is what created these beautiful color shifts in this kind of minty aqua that you can see. Um, so I will of course link to this sweater below and if you're a newsletter subscriber make sure to check your inbox. You should have gotten a newsletter on Tuesday with your special discount code and that will expire this evening at midnight Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> All right let's answer some questions. So question number one is about swatches. I'm sure you have plenty of them. Is it useful to keep them? Do you reference them, yarn, needle size? Have you a tip to collect them nicely? So um, I do have quite a few swatches and I do keep them more just kind of sentimental value or not really knowing what else to do with them. Some end up hanging on a wall. As you can see this one back here, that is actually from the Stone Crop Cardium Pullover from Ryan Beck, I think it was 2019. Um, and I have others, I have a like a pin board that I pin a bunch of them to. And otherwise I have just a big like two gallon bag that's full of old swatches. Um, I think it would be fun, especially if you're somebody who tends to stick to one color palette, which is not me, but you could even stitch them together and make a little swatch afghan, um, I think would be fun. But mine would probably be really ugly because I tend to make really oddly shaped swatches <laughs> and I use a lot of different colors, um, but it could still be a fun little mashup. But, and I do, so what I do, I don't tend to really go back to my swatches that I can think of where I would reference them again. Um, I at least, you know, I tend to end up re-swatching for whatever new project I'm on, but I will need to reference my swatches just during the design pro progress? process process is what I want to say during the design process um, of the design I'm currently on and so this is actually a swatch from Pink Fizz one of my sweaters this is La Bienname her cash merino held with her mohair and so what I like to do because I will not remember needle size like even the next day, especially if I'm trying it out on a few different needle sizes, I will not remember which one I liked the best. Um, so what I do is I use eyelets to track my needle size. So I just simply do like a knit two together yarn over for as many, um, as many as I need to make note of what needle size. So this, I used a size six, so there's six little eyelets here. Um, you could also tie knots if you forgot to do the eyelets or you don't like doing the eyelets, um, another way I'll do it is I put tie knots into the tail of my swatch um, and then I can just count how many bumps there are. The only tricky thing is if I use US sizes, so those are all whole numbers except for like 10 and a half is one of the only needle sizes I can think of off the top of my head that would have a half. Whereas if you go with the millimeter system, you're, there's a lot of 0.5s. Um, so I don't know how I would track that. So if you use the millimeter system and you have a way you like to note that, I would love to hear it in the comments below. Um, so yeah, that is what I do with my swatches. I would love to show you my swatch wall, but I attempted it a few minutes ago. This is now the second time I'm recording this video because when I tried to move my phone, it turned off. <laughs> So now I'm too afraid to do it, but um, maybe sometime I'll share a little like photo on my, um... you know what I'll do if I don't forget <laughs> in 20 minutes? I'll do it at the end if I remember. 
and that way if it shuts off we'll just have a real quick goodbye and, and i'll just disappear um and then if it i don't accidentally turn it off again you'll get to see my swatch wall so that's what we'll do so remember andrea swatch wall okay um, oh, and this person was a little tricksy and snuck in a second question about socks. She is, or they are planning to start their first pair of socks and they bought two really nice skeins of 100 gram yarn from a French dyer. But my fear is if I do a swatch and don't undo it, do I have enough yarn to finish long enough socks? I think you should be fine. Um, for instance, let me take off the sock I'm wearing. Well, can you see? Yeah, you can see my leg. So do you see these are fairly tall socks and I don't have super tiny feet. Um, and that is using about 100 grams of yarn. Um, and I knit them longer than I usually do. They are my DRK everyday socks that I knit out of spin cycle yarn, striping them. And I used up like almost all the yarn. So I just kept knitting them. Once I got to close, like, fairly close to the top of the cuffs, I knit them two at a time so that I could use up like every little bit of yarn. Um, and they're pretty long. I even socks that I've knit for Peter, I had a hundred gram skein and his feet are much bigger than mine and I had extra at the end. So I don't think you should have any problem um, with having enough yarn. Okay. Um, I am still very new in learning about the different types of fibers used in yarn, and I'm curious about mixing different types in a project. For example, I have a DK weight cashmere yarn that I want to use in a colorwork sweater, but all the rest of the yarn is superwash merino wool. The color just works perfectly, and I want to use my stash, but I am not sure how it will work out. Are there any yarns that should never be mixed together? Is there any special care that I need to take if I do mix yarns? So I say go for it. 100%, especially what you, um, the example you gave of the cashmere and the merino will play very well together in a color work sweater. I don't foresee any issues or needing to take any special care of it. Um, I think it'll be really, really beautiful. And in general, the only time I would wonder if there would be like special care that would be needed is if you were using yarns that were extremely different for e from each other, such as like an animal fiber and a plant fiber. So for instance, like bamboo and cotton, they grow a lot and they don't bloom a ton where, so if they were paired with something like wool in a color work sweater, I would probably do a decent sized swatch of the color work motif I wanted to use using those yarns and I would just wet block it and I would see if I like the fabric that they create together and how they feel together. Um, but otherwise I say go for it. Like, especially using it for things like color work, I mean, even stripes, like in my first stripes, I have a sort of called stripes and I paired Surrey Alpaca with um, Ramboulet. I don't know if I'm saying that sheep breed correctly. I spend so much time alone. I need to start uh, being around people so I know if I'm pronouncing things correctly. Um, but I did those together and I loved it. I loved that the Surrey alpaca, which is really fuzzy. If you've never used Surrey, it reminds me of um, mohair and that it's very fluffy and fuzzy. It has a beautiful halo and it just made the sweater so much more interesting to have a few of those random fuzzy stripes in there. So I love how even playing with different yarn weights, which I think you can do in color work too. Again, maybe you don't wanna do extremes, but you can absolutely pair like a DK with a sport weight or, um, yeah, I guess that's my example. Um, and really just see this sweater, for instance, is DK and sport weight. So the this black and white marl, the metamorphic is DK, and then the dyed in the wool is a sport weight. And I would even say it's a fairly light sport weight. Um, and they're beautiful together. And I feel like all that texture does, or all the difference in weights, yarn weights does, is it just like amps up the texture and makes it even more interesting to look at. So at the end of the day, if you have any concern, do a swatch and see how they play together. But I think it's really fun 
to think outside the box and there's no reason to put constraints on ourselves that don't need to be there. So there's no yarn police that are gonna come along saying you shouldn't mix those together. Um, you should just try it and if you like it, do it. Okay, how do you wash your hand knit socks? I usually throw mine with my regular wash since I mainly knit with superwash yarn but I find it makes my socks pile, oh, pill faster and sometimes they'll felt a bit. Is there a better way? I would like for my socks to last long and stay looking nice. Thank you for your time. So um, we've actually had a few great sock conversations. So you might want to peek back through some of the episodes and especially make sure to check out the comments um, because lots of people have shared their preferred sock yarns that hold up really well, especially for machine washing, if you would prefer to stick with that method. But for me personally, as I have shared a few times, I do wear pretty much only um, hand knit socks all fall and winter long. And so I'll get a good little pile of them and I hand wash all of my socks and I do exactly what I do whenever I am washing any of my hand knits or blocking any of my hand knits. I just run a warm um, bath or warm sink full of water and with some wool wash. My favorite is the Farmer's Daughter Fibers, um, but Eucalyn's great, Soak is great, all of them are great. Uh, I do prefer no rinse wool wash because I don't want to have to like refresh water, waste more water. I just like doing the one and done. Um, so I just soak it in some water with wool wash. And even like if I'm going to block a new pattern and I'm like, oh, I have a pair of socks here that needs to be washed. I just throw them in with it. Um, but yeah, I just stick them in the water. I might give them a little zhuzh and then I let them soak until I remember to take them out. A minimum of 15 minutes, but I like to go longer than that, honestly. And then I just wring them out a little bit and we have a bar that hangs in our laundry room and I just hang them over that to dry. And it has proved to be a really simple, efficient way for me to do my hand knit sock laundry where I just throw them in once I've got a few or when I'm blocking something else and it's not very fiddly and I feel like they're holding up really well. So that is what I do. Okay, so... I have a sweater made with merino DK and it doesn't fit me great, so I don't wear it. I love the yarn and would love to reuse it for another project. Do I need to do anything special to the yarn in order to do that? Do I need to wash it to get the kinks out or will rewinding it into a ball help that? So I do recommend, especially a sweater, I'm guessing you've blocked it, maybe you've worn it once or twice and realized, mm, you know, like I'm not sure how long it's been sitting there knit up. Um, but I, I would wash your yarn after you've unraveled it. Um, I remember a few years ago, I saw somebody, they post, they showed, they had unraveled their yarn from a project and then just showed swatches of knit with washed yarn and knit with unwashed yarn that still had the kinks in it and how much it ended up affecting the overall gauge and look of the fabric. So I do think it's a really good idea to refresh that yarn um what you're gonna need to do is once you've unraveled your sweater or as you unravel it if you have a nitty knotty that would be ideal for rewrapping that into a skein um but you could also turn like a chair or a stool upside down and wrap it around the posts of this um, chair or stool you just need to make sure if it's a stool if it tapers down towards the seat you're going to need to find a way to keep the yarn from going down because otherwise you won't be able to like lift it back off <laughs> when you're done but you basically just need to get the yarn back into a big loop so that you it can be a skein again and then before washing it, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to secure it with some figure eight ties. So all that means is you're gonna split the yarn in half and then wind a little piece of like waste yarn around that, just like the number eight, like an infinity sign, you know, and then just tie that. And I like to do that about three times and that will keep your yarn from getting tangled once you put it in the bath um, and soak it. So, um, yeah, then I would just soak it just like you're blocking anything. You can throw some wool wash in there if you want to. And then after it's soaked for a while, um, you can squeeze all the water out and then wrap it in a towel, step on it, try and get some more out. And then if it's still kinky, you could do what us hand spinners do when they finish a yarn, um, where I like to snap it. And what that helps, um, 
do for hand spinners is it helps to redistribute the twist but i also find that it helps get out little weird kinks or pigtails that might be happening so to snap it you would just um, stick your hands into that loop of yarn and just snap it um, and then like rotate a little and keep doing that a little bit and then just hang it up to dry um, so that is what i would do and i would avoid doing super giant skeins um that has been another lesson from my hand spinning that i've learned when i tend to do um you know i don't i used to want to avoid you know having to join in a new, new yarn and things like that so there are times when i've done these giant skeins and um i find that they're harder to twist up into a skein if you want to store it for a while and they're just a little more unwieldy and I find that they have a greater chance of getting a weird tangle in them. So when you go to like re cake them up, something gets wonky. So anyways, um, I wouldn't do super giant skeins, but yeah, that is what I would do. All right. Next question. I knit super loosely and I usually adapt my gauge to what is needed, but honestly, it's just getting old. I find myself needing to size down two needle sizes and usually a size in the pattern. For instance, I knit a size one instead of a two to make something that fits my body with recommended ease. I knit continental and wrap the yarn twice around my finger to tighten it up even more. I've tried wrapping three times even, but usually it gets really tight and sort of cuts off the circulation of my finger. Do you have any tips or recommendations for this? I am feeling a little bit frustrated. I bet you are, you know, whenever there is something that's kind of sucking the joy away i think it's a good idea i just realized there's like a really bright spot over there sorry y'all um if there's something that's kind of taking away some of your joy during something that should be filling you up i am all about trying to fix that um so i really liked this question too because i have a friend who had the same exact issue as you and another thing to consider is on some projects you're gonna run out of needle sizes. Like if you wanna knit a pair of socks that are already knit on a size zero, you can only go so far down and do you wanna use needles that are that tiny or is that gonna hurt your hands, you know? So I do think it's something that I would look into making some adjustments. Um, so for my friend, when we chatted about it, because it, it just sounds so similar, and she was saying, she was like, you know, I can't knit socks because for a sweater, I already have to go down to like a size two to get gauge because I knit so loosely and so we were chatting I was like well, how what style do you knit and she was like continental and so we after chatting about it I was like I think you should try English and she did and it totally fixed it for her so I would recommend the same for you I would recommend that you try English style knitting in general because of the way we wrap the yarn differently continental knitters generally knit looser and English knitters knit tighter. Now I have also seen this in the other direction. I have a friend I taught how to knit back when I lived in Michigan. And oh my goodness, I, she's the tightest knitter I had ever met. met. And then she, and, and so she was not enjoying it. She was not enjoying knitting. And I think she was even just kind of thinking like, okay, this isn't for me. And then she ended up learning continental style and totally helped her gauge and made her hands feel so much better um, and I think in part because if we are trying to force our hands to fix our gauge is issues it's stressful it's stress on our hands we have to constantly think about it we're constantly trying to adjust to make that happen like have you ever tried to just knit something tighter or looser than what your body naturally wants to do it's like you're fighting it you're fighting the natural process so i highly recommend that you give english knitting a try because i would be really curious if that fixed it for you um obviously learning a new style of knitting can have its own awkward stages, its aches and pains to get through. Um, but having done it myself, I think it can be a really good solution and might be the trick that you need. Outside of that, the only other things I can think of is um, changing your needle material. So maybe trying wood needles if you're currently using metal because wood needles are stickier. They are going to grip onto the yarn a bit better to tighten you up. Um, also sticking with stickier yarns, woolier yarns, I would avoid slippery yarns. Slippery yarns are just going to create a looser fabric for you. Um, the other thing that crossed my mind 
when I have watched students in my classes who are a bit looser, I would pay attention to where you're keeping that left finger as you're knitting. So as you're going to pick that yarn, how high up is that finger? If that finger tends to reach to the sky, it's causing this like, that extra length of yarn that is created doing that, I think can loosen things up. So you wanna try and bring that finger down towards the needle tip. I wonder if I have needles right here. Oh no, just a second. Okay. So as you are grabbing that yarn, what can happen is this guy just likes to float right up. So we'll have our yarn over that left finger. So you're just whoop, whoop, you know, knitting. Try and bring that back down. And it's going to feel a little awkward at first if that is what you're doing. You might not be doing that. Um, you know, it's something that you'd kind of have to retrain your hands. But that might help too. But as far as like trying to adjust how you tension the yarn through your hands, what I have found is there is just one way that feels good and it's different for everybody. Um, and when we try to manipulate that, I think it causes more frustration because the yarn doesn't move as smoothly through our hands. Like for me, if I knit English style, I don't tension my yarn at all. I, it just is over my pointer finger and that just works for me. But when I knit continental, I have to have it looped around my pinky once. And that was actually the trickiest part of switching knitting styles was figuring out how to tension the yarn in that hand. And for a while it was awkward and I would just have to drop the yarn and like reposition, which was frustrating, but you, your hands do figure it out. So give yourself a little leeway there, but I really would try, I would try English style and see if that helps. Okay. So this last question, um, I, I get this in a couple different ways. I also get this about kid knits. Um, so basically this knitter was wondering, um, your patterns seem to mostly be geared towards or styled for women. The only exception I have found is your spice cardigan. Uh, do you just not enjoy designing for men, which is your prerogative, of course, or do you instead think of many of your patterns as unisex? As a male knitter who likes to knit for himself and for other men, as well as for women and other genders, I am always on the lookout for modern looking garments that will fit a male figure well. I also always think there must be a huge market niche, but given the still comparable dearth of patterns for men, I guess not. Um, so this is a longer question, so I'll kind of stop here, but um, basically the truth of it is, I'm just a very selfish knitter. I, I think that's just like the ideas that pop into my head are always for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I do, I do have the spice cardigan. I also have the oxbow cardigan. Um, that's another one that I actually did design for the whole family. So that comes in men's, women's and kiddos. Um, I do in general, I do believe that clothing is unisex. I don't believe that clothing has a gender, but I will also very much acknowledge that different body shapes and proportions are going to need some adjustments, you know? So if we think as, if when we have to grade patterns, we kind of have to think a little bit in averages or typicals. So like the typical male body is going to have broader shoulders and need a deeper yoke depth than a typical female body. Um, but I also believe that anybody can wear whatever clothing they wanna wear. Um, I do think that my patterns are fairly easy to modify because I don't do waist shaping. Um, you know, I don't do very form fitting or curvy kinds of knits. So a lot of times it really is just knitting um, a size that is gonna accommodate the shoulders and then maybe deepening the yoke and deepening the length a little bit. Um, but that being said, especially like Spicy Pete deserves some more sweaters and my kids do too. <laughs> and I have been getting quite a few requests of even just my patterns that are already out there that people are like, I would really love to be able to knit this and, um, or I would love to have this for my kids or my partner or whatever it may be. So I am very much trying to start bringing in some more of that. So I appreciate that question and your feedback that you would love to see some of those other sizes um, because that's good to know. I do think that the demographic and the patterns that do very well are kind of 
geared the way they currently are, but um, I would also love to see my patterns on any and all who wish to wear them. So um, from kiddos to, to Spicy Pete and everyone in between. So I am, I just need to change up my workflow a little bit to allow that. So thank you for putting it up there for me even more because I do get those emails. <laughs> They're like, hey, I want to knit that or that would look really cute on my kid. Okay, so let's talk about a little spinning. Um, when I was over at my swatch wall grabbing this one to show the little holes, um, I did find, look at, this is my first chain ply. And this was actually just left over of a yarn that I had fractally spun, which this made me think, I have a question for you, fellow spinners. What do you do? with the leftover yarn on a bobbin. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> when you have like, it's just, what do you do with this little tiny bit? Um, for me, it kind of depends what I'm doing and how much I have left. So for instance, this was a fractal spin that I did. And I just had a little bit left on one bobbin and I was learning how to chain ply and I wanted to see how this colorway would look chain plied as opposed to just fractal and so I just used up the leftover for that and knit this little tiny swatch over it put my hand behind it it's not so fun oh a little fuzzy right there um so I do like to do something like that or um and sometimes it's the opposite where I'll like I'll finish it off with a little two ply if the color doesn't matter, I'll take the rest and make a little center center pole ball if I'm doing like a two ply. And I'll just finish it off that way if, um, let's say it's all one color, so it's not gonna get wonky um, with the color lengths. Um, but I'm curious, I would love to know what you all do with those little leftover bits. Cause like this, I just, I was trying to do a center pull ball and it got too tight on my thumb for me to pull off and then the yarn broke and so I just got so annoyed that I ended up just wrapping it all off and now I have this little random ball of singles but I was like I wonder what other people do I would like to hear so tell me what you do and this week I treated myself to finishing up some yarns so first I want to show you this one this is nest fiber Autumn Harvest, I think is what they called it. And it's a club color, maybe from August. And I, after that fabulous conversation with Jillian Moreno, I just really wanted to try my hand at spinning some thicker yarns. I very much spin fine. Um, Cause it's just, it's easier for me to be consistent that way. But when I was trying out this little sample, I think I showed it last week. It's that little green, oh, you can't see it. It was just this little bit, I, it was like an ounce. And I just spun it thick. And it was really fun. And I could not believe like the squish factor when I was done. I was like, this is so delightful. And I can see why people spin up these thicker yarns. So I really wanted to challenge myself to that. So I divided the yarn. I think at first I was gonna do fractal and then it didn't divide well. So I was like, uh oh. So I ended up dividing the entire four ounces of fiber um, into six vertically. And then I just paired up three for each bobbin um, to try and get the most equal amount on each bobbin basically. And just spun them all end to end in the same order and then plied those together. And this is so, squishy it's actually still like the tiniest bit damp because I just washed it yesterday but like it's so squishy I can't even like can you see look at I mean I'm so happy <laughs> so fun so I cannot wait to knit a swatch out of this I don't know what I'm going to use it for maybe a hat I also think that these colors would be really really amazing in color work so I might do that I think that actually sounds really good. Okay, so there is that skein I finished and then I finished my sock yarn. So my DRK Everyday Socks, 
Um, so this was my 100% Dorset. And again, I actually also divided this into six and then spun two per bobbin for a three ply and got about a fingering weight. Can you see that very well? Um, this also has like the teensy, I sorry, I finished this yesterday too. Um, I kind of wonder if I could have, I actually think it's good. I was a little concerned that my ply was just like, just, just a little bit, just a hair loose which has been tricky for me with my Hanson. I feel like sometimes I ply looser on there um, because it's just faster. It's when I'm on my wheel and I'm treadling, I feel more in control because I can slow down and really see how much twist I'm getting in there and then speed it up. And you can do that on the Hanson. But my, the knob is so touchy that it's like, it's just amazing how like the teeniest bit is like, ooh. And it's hard, you know, it's because I have to use a hand to speed it up and slow it down. It's not my feet doing it. So then I have to let go and you need two hands to ply, or at least I do. Um, but anyways, I'm actually very pleased. And now that I'm looking at it um, in the light of day after it's dried, I think it looks really good. So I cannot wait to see how this knits up and how it holds up because from what I've been told, Dorset should be a good one for sock yarn. So anyways, here is my finished sock yarn. So I am going to, once it's completely dry, I'll get that all caked up and get it not hooked on my watch. Um, and start knitting my socks for the knit along. And it is not too late to join the knit along. It's going through March. Um, and all that information is below. There's links and stuff on if you want to join and you don't have to be a spinner. You can just join in with some sock yarn out of your stash if you want to. We're all just knitting along. There are a few hundred people participating. It's such a nice group of people. So we would love to have you join. Um, speaking of knit alongs, the DRK March to May knit along will be here so soon. So I am busy prepping for that. This would be a lovely option to knit. It started off as just a sweater knit along, but I had so many people asking to do shawls that now we do two forums. So we do a shawl forum and a sweater forum. Um, so yeah, I will be getting all that information out at the end of this month and stay tuned. You'll wanna subscribe to the newsletter. I promise, yeah. Oh, and Oh, I have, oh, dropping it. So many, so many things I finished. Hold on, I lost it. I feel like I haven't been spinning much, but apparently I have been. <laughs> Cause I also finished my sweater spin. So this is that marled woolen spun that I've been working on, which actually would be quite nice in this sweater. Um, it's probably not a DK weight though. So I have not done any of my yarn specs on this except for taking the weight. So I will have to see, um, like I've seen how heavy it is, but I haven't actually gotten a yarn weight on it. Just looking at it, I think it's hovering between a sport and a DK. And this, I have one that is spun a little bit looser than the other three. And I was going to try replying it, but you know, I decided not to. I started a little bit and I just was like, life's too short. <laughs> And I didn't really trust that I was going to do it well. And yeah, I just I decided I didn't want to. So I didn't. <laughs> uh, okay. I think that's all my spinny things to show you. So now that I have finished those spins, I am back to working on my big CVM spin, the brownish gray. Um, which, you know, at first I was like, oh, this is going to feel like a little boring to get back to after doing this like really fun, plumpy, colorful spin but actually last night I sat down just to kind of get my wheel back set up for that I'm using my match list for that and I ended up sitting there and spinning for like 45 minutes I didn't even listen to my book or anything and it felt so good it was so nice um so I'm gonna be working on that and then I do I already have the hat going for the our spring knit along challenge where we knit a hat in a weekend. And I think I'm gonna knit up some new samples for my kiddos using some hand spun. 
and I just got my Nest Fiber Club Fiber for February and it's like a Valentine's one. And so my daughter, I know will be all about it cause it's like pinks, reds and purples, which are her favorites. So I thought about maybe spinning that up for her hat. So ideas, ideas. Okay. You want to see my swatch wall? So let's cross our fingers just in case I accidentally managed to turn this off again. Uh, thank you for joining me as always. You can find links to everything below. Uh, but let's hope it doesn't turn off this time. I wonder if I need to, you know what? I'm going to slide it the other way. Oh, I'm too afraid. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. Let's see what happens. Whoop. So I also really wish there was a function where you could turn cameras around on the F and wait, okay, hold on. Let me get this giant thing out of the way. Okay, so here is this little like, whoop, sorry guys, I am not great at this. Okay, so these are my, where I pin my swatches. So this is basically how I store them. So for instance, here is where I started for what ended up being um, 2020s, I think. Yeah, 2020s Rhinebeck sweater. I ended up here. That was the final swatch for um, the Spark cardigan, which also led to the Spice cardigan and the Sparky pullover. Um, here's Weekender Light, Winter Beach, Cardi, Moon Whistle Shawl. Didn't end up doing anything with this one. <laughs> um, this is the daily sweater, uh, birch pullover, pink fizz. This is a little swatch one of my students made me years ago. And Douglas Cardi, even fall. Oh, this is my Andrea cardigan. Not the stitch pattern, just the main fabric. So anyways, that is, that's what I do with my swatches. It's a, I pin them over there. So yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to end this here, but thank you as always for joining me and I hope to see you back here next week. Bye.